What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and welcome to the guide for Jester for Darkest Dungeon 2. In this video, I will help to explain what Jester's strengths are, his weaknesses, how to play him, what his skills do, what his paths do, what his gear does, and some teammates to help build teams for him to get you started. Starting off, what is Jester good at? He is a movement, aka dance heavy character. So this is really good for a lot of fights that try to reposition your team so he can help fix it. He is a great setter of combo. Pretty much everyone except Vestal likes combo tokens. And guess what? Jester throws them out all the freaking time. His final major strength is that he is a fantastic support unit. He can't heal your allies HP, but he can heal stress. He can buff them. He can move stuff. He can disrupt the enemy team. He can give you extra turns. There is so much this character can offer to a team that at times a well-played and well-built Jester will feel like you're playing a different game. For weaknesses, it was pretty tough to come up with a few for Jester, but if I had to pick three that I could possibly cite, the first would be he has low HP. This is kind of offset by Virtuoso, but if you're not running that version of Jester, his HP is not the highest. The reason I hesitate to make this a weakness is because Jester can generate dodge and blind enemies and move himself physically out of harm's way. So his low HP isn't even really that much of a detriment. You probably see why I'm struggling with this list. His next potential weakness is he has low on hit damage. His bleeds do okay. His normal on hits are like three to six and then four to seven. However, as always, there's something to note as an exception with Jester and that is finale. Finale hits ridiculously hard, so it's really hard to say that this character has low damage when that move exists. Jester's final and probably actual real weakness is his teammates. The reason is Jester is incredible at elevating his teammates to do great things. However, if they are not performing or you're not playing them correctly or your team isn't built that well or people start dying, his effectiveness starts to drop. Which makes Jester the perfect example of he is only as strong as his teammates. How do we play Jester? First thing we have to do when we are building our team is to decide where Jester is trying to move about. Is he going from three to four? Is he going from four to two? Is he soloing, going up to one? There are a lot of questions to answer in terms of who's moving, where Jester's moving and all that. So make sure you at least have that rough plan in mind when you're at the crossroads. The next thing to focus on when playing Jester are your combo tokens. Mainly, who gets them? With someone that can reliably put out combo every turn, it's very important to decide who is spending those tokens and when. So make sure that your team has at least one or two people that can make great use of the combo ability. The final tip on playing Jester revolves around Encore. This is one of his moves that you unlock through doing his shrines, but Encore is what I would say, and many others honestly, is it's the best ability in the entire game. It's not so much that it can be an extra turn, it's that it can be any other ability in the game if you time it correctly. There are a few more hidden benefits to Encore though, which I'll talk about a bit more when we get to the skill section. Now it's time to talk about Jester's skills and his paths. So we'll start with Wander and his unlock skills, or his first ones you get. That is Razor's Wit, which is pretty much combo setting and to pull him out of rank four that's not solo, which is nice. And upgraded, this gives him some dodge. The crit rate is pretty nice as well, but this is pretty much what you're doing, at least at the start of the game, to throw combo tokens on enemies. Next is Fade to Black. This is a move Jester honestly doesn't deserve because it is so powerful with the uh, the reach. Same with Razor's Whip, by the way, but this one's a little more fair. But Fade to Black is a guaranteed source of blind, even without upgrade. It gets the same nice crit rates that his other move has, and when it's upgraded, it applies combo. It also moves them back, so this is a good repositioning tool as well as a constant source of blind. I can't think of a character honestly that can blind every single turn like every other blind attack in the game has some kind of cooldown except this next is slice off and this is just some nice damage the bleed damage doesn't go up but what is nice is when it's upgraded it applies vulnerable this can be really good for someone to follow up on or to get rid of an extra block token because you'll remove one when you hit the target and then the vulnerable will cancel out the next one if it's there battle ballad doesn't seem too great once you start getting his other stuff but what's interesting about jester is like the way you play him may start with just you know damage and then you go up into 
using the other support skills, maybe some dance teams, and then like you come back down into uh, using things like ballad and play out, and then you really see the full potential of this character. But ballad, you know, just one strength token and upgraded, it might give you crit and removes combo. Both of those are actually pretty nice. And the really good thing about this move is the repositioning. So if your leper gets thrown into three and jester's in two, for example, you can just push leper up into two and buff him, which is nice. Next is Inspiring Tune, which is just a really strong single target stress heal. Kind of wish this removed horror at base, but I guess that maybe that would be too strong. But yeah, it's five stress or more, heals two, upgraded heals three. Pretty straightforward, but it is nice to have. Harvest is bleed on two targets. What makes this actually good is that you can remove multiple defensive tokens off of two units at the same time. I guess one off of each. But actually, you know what? Potentially two. If you hit through dodge and they have block. Not a very common scenario, but you know, you can do that. This is mostly to either finish someone off that has like no HP at death door, or to help take off, you know, defensive tokens from enemies, or if you have a team that's focused on hitting multiple spots at once, you know, if you want to cleave the enemy team down, this is something that helps with that, so. It's hard to say which is better between Slice Off and Harvest. They're both similar, but they're both good in different circumstances. Finale. This is your super damage blast ability with Jester. You really want to make sure someone's comboed for this because then it doubles the damage. And the mastery is interesting because it picks up the minimum damage quite a bit. So it's way more consistent when it hits enemies, even though the top end only goes up by one. The crit rate is pretty good at 10 to 20, and then it can vulnerable Jester as well as daze them, and then it throws them into the back of the party. These downsides are honestly not that big of a deal, and this move can hit incredibly hard. It's also one of the very few super nuke attacks that you can do on turn one, which is what made Howling End so good, which makes PBS opener pretty good depending where you're at. And Finale follows the same trend. Solo. This move is pretty sick. So you get a couple dodge tokens, you combo the target, and then you get speed, and you push yourself up to the front. But as we'll see in the trinket section, one of his trinkets gives him taunt, so you can solo out of four and tank a couple hits, kind of like a pseudo repartee. But there are other ways to make this really cool. And solo, like, noisemakers that give you taunt when you hit an ally with them. There are a lot of cool things with solo, not just the positioning, not just setting up finale, but you know the buffs too if you want to tank stuff. It's a very versatile move. And we have play out. This is not quite as strong as battle ballad because what a lot of us have kind of resigned ourselves to is understanding that the game is very damage focused and play out just gives you defense. You know, the best way to protect your HP and stuff is to kill the enemy first. Ballad helps you kill things faster, play out doesn't. Doesn't mean that playout's a bad ability at all. It's a really good ability. So you can give yourself or someone else too, because he can use these on himself. You can give them block and remove combo when it's upgraded. That is really good in certain fights. Then we come to Encore. <sighs> okay, so I definitely feel this is the best move in the game, just because, as I said before, it can become any move. And this is really, really powerful. So the benefits of an extra action are that your cooldowns will go down a turn. So if it has, for instance, like Finale, well, maybe not Jester is a good example, but if you have like Howling End with Hellion, right? This has a two turn cooldown upgraded. So you can Howling End give Hellion the uh, the Encore so she can you know move back up front to rank one if you want to get that Ravager bonus and stuff. And then since you on quarter, this already ticks down again, so it's only got one more actual turn of cooldown. So these turns with Encore can be really, really powerful because you just get those extra turns, you refresh your cooldowns faster, but also the other hidden benefits are that you don't trigger damage over time when you get the extra turn. So if you have like your Plague Doctor at Death's Door, she has a stack of bleed on her, she might actually die. You can Encore her, she can use Battlefield Medicine to cure the bleed and heal herself, and she won't have a risk of dying. 
So this move is ridiculous in the combinations that it enables. And something else we're talking about is the finale loop. I was thinking about that for a sec. We'll talk about it after Echoing March. So Echoing March is... It's not a bad ability at all. It's just kind of limited in its effectiveness. There are some enemies that just instantly lose the game by getting pulled, especially because you can keep pulling them per turn, like Fishmonger is an example of that. Some, like the Gun Bandit crack shot. There are a couple enemies in the game that really hate being moved, and if you have Intermezzo as his path, you can bleed them while moving. So it's a fun ability. Not the best limited use, but really cool when it does stuff. Okay, so something to talk about is the finale loop, the encore loop, whatever you want to call it. But as you notice here, encore, when you upgrade it, the cooldown goes to two turns and it doesn't daze Jester. Also something to note with encore before I get into this, I'm sorry. Because this move is so loaded, there's a lot to talk about. Another good use of encore is if someone's stunned or dazed, you can encore them. That turn will get shoved back or stunned or whatever, or eaten, whatever you want to call it and then they get their other turn normally. So this is a pretty good way around some other disruptive mechanics. So like I said, the sky's the limit for this move. It is super powerful. But the finale loop is once Encore is upgraded, since everything here has two turns or less to cool down, so Encore two, finale two, and then solo is two, you can loop these indefinitely. You can Encore someone, on your first turn or your third turn, second turn, whenever you want to do it. And then you can solo and then you can finale right after, like the next turn, because you're going fast and blasting them. And then when you go to the back of the party, you can use Encore again, you're safe in rank four, you can do other stuff with it. And then you can solo again. And then guess what? Finale's back up. So this is a really effective damage loop that's, you know, you have to have his unlocks to get it, but once you do, it's it's a nice alternative to just using, you know, Wit and Fade. But they're both good for different reasons, but this is really good for burst damage, like consistent burst. So since we talked about all that, let's talk about his paths. Jester's paths are pretty straightforward. They don't do like Flagellant and Vessel where they change the skills directly. So Virtuoso... This is effectively Jester Plus. This is what everyone calls it just because it's regular Jester, but stronger. So you get bonus HP, bonus speed, awesome. You get minus dot res, which he can deal with because he can move around and dodge and stuff like that. And then you give a random ally two turns of stress immunity. It's not like stress resist unless you have like that one disease that lowers it by 50. But if they don't have that, then you have stress immunity for two turns. There are some crazy stuff you can do with two turns of stress immunity. Certain items that give you stress, you can pass, because pass heal also gives you stress. You can use Endure with Flagellant, because that stress heals and then damages him. Or if you just use this and Cardinal decides to crit hollow vessel you, guess what? You blocked four stress. Insane. Way too good. And this is just regular Jester. You can do whatever the hell you want with him. He's just stronger. So this, this path is busted. And then next is Soloist. I don't know why these are out of order. Soloist is a bit more fair. And you can see the logic in it. This is just another damage path and like minus HP and stuff. So it's pretty boring in terms of implementation. But you get bonus damage, bleed res piercing, bleed skills crit at the cost of less HP and less speed. The less speed is really what hurts this path the most because you don't want to be going last or near the end of the turn order with a character like this, especially when he has his HP cut. And also, it kind of makes the bleed chance more of a like a trap in this path because you wanna get the bleed up as soon as possible so the enemy's taking that damage immediately. But instead, since you have minus speed, you're dropping bleed on them probably after they've gone. And then that happens every turn. So every turn they go, you go after them and your bleed's always like a turn behind which isn't the end of the world, but it's also not ideal. Venom Drop has the same exact problem. So what this path is really good for is actually Finale. And the reason is you can use Solo because that speed token negates the speed penalty, and then you get bonus damage to hit something harder, as well as the minus HP is easier to mitigate when you're generating dodge and dodge plus. 
So if you're gonna run Soloist, I would suggest either picking Bleed or Finale. Don't try and do both. You're just not gonna have the cohesive turns and experience needed to to really pull it off. I mean, you can be a god at the game and maybe you can make it work, but it's so clunky and you have to give up all those really good support moves for it. So we have Intermezzo for our final one. Actually, I haven't even talked about where these, you know what? I'll talk about placement after, I forgot about that, I'm sorry. So Intermezzo is a really interesting path because there's a whole bunch of text here. Song skills inflict two bleed. What are song skills? Glad you asked. Battle Ballad. Actually, can I show all of them at one time? Yeah. Oh, I can't. Almost. So we actually have six song skills. So Battle Ballad. This can bleed your teammates. Tune can bleed your teammates. Solo can bleed the enemy. Playout can bleed your teammates. Encore can bleed your teammates. Echoing March can bleed the enemy every time it goes off because it actually gets that extra thing. So when you hit them with the first shot of Echoing March, they get the two bleed from it being a song, and then they move and they get two more bleeds. So it actually turns Echoing March into a really effective bleed tool that you don't have to keep hitting the enemy with to uh, to bleed them, which is nice. And then otherwise you get, you know, Stress Resist on Tune, which can be nice. And then Ballad and Playout all give extra tokens, which is pretty cool. So you can actually run a pretty effective um, jester like this and you can stuff him in rank four where he just plays the songs over and over to move the team and disrupt the enemy and stuff like that and I hear a lot of people probably going well chef occultist sucks because his heal is kind of the same thing where it bleeds teammates so doesn't that make jester you know for intermezzo equally bad and I would say no and the reason is Occultist bleeds his teammates when he's trying to save their lives. Jester can bleed enemies or teammates alike, but he's trying to like buff them and set them up and stuff like that. So usually the bleed isn't as as dangerous. It can still pop off and hurt you, don't get me wrong. But the situations in which the bleeds are being applied are different between the two characters, so I don't see it as being as dangerous. Yeah, so Intermezzo can go into four or three. Doesn't matter what the teams are. We'll talk about teammates later. But uh, for the other paths, if you're on Soloist, you could run... Um, actually, I got to talk about upgrades too. God, I'm... I, man, I get these comments. People say, oh, you got to write your videos out better. I write them, dude, okay? I'm just... Uh, there's a lot to talk about this character. And so with um, your upgrade points, your first upgrade for sol or not soloist for uh mezzo could be tune could be encore could be march if you really want to but um probably tune or encore is what i do first and then we have soloist which if you're gonna run this as i said you kind of want to pick damage so you can pick a normal looking jester loadout right so you just have on hit damage if you wanted to do that you could run bleed and just do something different with your skills. I mean, I guess you could still use Fade to Black. Actually, mm, maybe Ballad just move people around, I guess. But yeah, something like this. You really just need these four at that point. Or if you want to run the finale setup, then... And this Jester would go in three. But if you want to run the finale setup, then it would look something... Maybe like this. And so the reason you would use something like fade to black is because if Jester gets pulled into two, he needs a way backwards. That's not finale, but otherwise you have your, uh, your buffs and your solo, your encore and your finale. And then for virtuoso, you play whatever the heck you want. Like any of the things I just mentioned, they all work with virtuoso. You can run this exact build. You can run something pretty safe and just back and forth, uh, with dancing like this. Really, anything works on Virtuoso. It is that ridiculous of a path. Now it's time to talk about Jester's Trinkets, and his class ones are good, and he has a lot of good options for other stuff. But starting with the class ones, Busker's Hall. This is one that is supposed to pretty much be for solo into finale. So if you use solo, you might get crit. You have someone else a token. Make sure you keep over 25 gold. It can't be 25 exactly. It has to be 26 or higher. 
and you buff someone else, you get some crit for your solo or your finale. It's really cool. Royal Summons. Again, this is another solo trinket. It may not seem like that at first. It is okay for the movement like effect to get crit in the mid ranks if you wanted to do that. Like if you wanted to, you know, Razor's Wit up to uh, Razor's Wit up to one and then fade to black back to three. Or I should say two to three. There you go. Sorry, the ranks. But yeah, you can keep generating crit randomly. But what's really good about this, though, is that taunt doesn't seem like it at first, but you can sit in the back, soak up a couple taunt tokens, and then solo up to the front where you have all of your dodge, and now you have taunts. So you're just draining enemy attacks. That can be really good. So even the negative on this is possibly a really good upside. Severed Finger, this is pretty much just Bleed Jester build. But you can also use it for the damage up on Finale or your other skills if other people are applying bleed in the party. So it's okay. It's not amazing. This is probably the one I utilize the least, but it's good enough. As for other trinkets, it's really whatever the heck you want. Jester is so flexible for his, his gear. Like, you can give him extra damage, speed, resist, HP. No healing, obviously, can't use that. There are plenty of like the cultist trinkets that are pretty good on him. Uh, proxy doll can be really good because you solo pick up three tokens or whatever and then finale with extra 30% damage. That's huge. There is also stuff like uh, Astro Glass Flute. Since he can stress heal, it doesn't really matter if other people are picking up stress. Um, Wounding Words is OK. Not amazing for him, but you know, if you want to go damage, it's there. Temptation's good on anyone. He actually has some other interesting stuff too. So if you run pure support jester or like bleed jester and you don't need the on hit damage, misstep is a good choice. There is snap judgment can be good, lockjaw. I'm really curious about the way this works because obviously it's gonna stick the bleeds. That's its primary purpose, but that minus 100% debuff piercing, does this make it so he can't weaken himself? with uh, Encore. He's still gonna stun himself because that's a different resist, but I wonder if he can be permanently resistant to that weekend. That would be actually kind of cool. And there's another uh, couple good ones. So Jealous Whisper, you get tokens by moving around. Jester's the best at moving himself and the party. So this can be good. Uh, Compass, I said I'm not gonna suggest this for everyone, but it's always good on anyone. Seaman's Boots, he can make use of because he has some pretty good speed. These are all Shroud Trinkets, by the way. So Bleed Trinkets out of the Shroud. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to rush over these. It's just the fact that everything is so freaking good on this character for pretty explainable reasons, I think. I hope. But, like, Snappy Swig, you can get a speed high enough, especially with Virtuoso. These are the Sprawl Trinkets. Uh, Pairing Patriarch. So you don't have to upgrade solo. You just always get the, the Dodge Plus. That can be pretty cool. Or, um, what's another one? Hastening history. He's never gonna be at two speed, so you can just throw out random speed tokens onto people. Literally, the sky is the limit for this dude. He can make so much use of whatever random trinkets that you just happen to find, resist trinkets, damage, it, whatever it is. As long as it's a stat that he can use, it's probably good. Let's round out the video by talking about good teammates for Jester, and honestly, with how good his support kit is, or just his normal standard builds, He's pretty good with almost anyone. It is very hard to find someone that doesn't work with this character. The only time he doesn't really feel as effective is if you stack your team with a bunch of backliners because Jester really wants to be in three for the most part. So if you have Plague Doctor and like Warlock Occultist and then you run Jester, it's going to get pretty crowded in that backline. But if you're not doing that and you make sure that you only have one other backline person in your team, then really any party can work with him. He's so versatile that everyone likes to have him. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments, if there's any other tips I missed and what other things you may wanna see going forward for content. If you wanna join the community or support the channel, there's a description box full of very cool links like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon for you to peruse at your own leisure. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.